the last two months, we have been facing a lot of problems in chilies because of thrips. Now, thrips is a very small insect and um, the farmers have been able to manage it. But um, in 2021, probably due to heavy rains and wet winds, the thrips population and the complex of thrips population became very high in many parts of uh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Karnataka. Now, chilies um, is grown in, as a monocrop in large extensive areas. And uh, when the problem became acute and the farmers were not able to control it, we examined it at the field level and found that one of the invasive thrips, which uh, was first reported in our country in 2015, were in millions on the chili crops. And this was causing major damage to the chilies. As a result, farmers experienced uh, upward curling of leaves, leaf uh, scars, flowers were affected with the damage and uh, flowers began to drop, fruit set was uh, affected, and uh, therefore the loss was immense to the farmers. And uh, secondly, when uh, the farmers saw these big numbers, they started panic spraying and combinations and cocktails of insecticides were sprayed, higher doses were sprayed. As a result, um, many uh, farmers were not able to control the thrips. But some farmers who used uh, certain botanicals like uh, uh, neem oil uh, botanicals, then uh, pongamia soap, were able to get better control. And uh, uh, we also saw some positive results coming whenever the uh, entomopathogens uh, and uh, microbial biocontrol agents were used. Sticky traps also gave us some indication that uh, thrips are getting attracted to blue sticky traps. Now, keeping all this uh, knowledge uh, which we gathered at the International Phytosanitary Research Services, uh, which is a, a, a pest management consultancy service in uh, Bangalore, uh, run by very uh, professional agricultural graduates uh, who also facilitate networking and also supply of um, uh, eco-friendly control interventions and sp spray materials to the farmers. You know, we thought we should be able to put up a small um, video show to tell you all exactly how to manage thrips complex in Chile in uh, future. Yeah. And so we move on. What uh, we see here is uh, different types of thrips. There are several species of thrips coming uh, into the chili crop. The thrips are thrips parvispinus, then cirtothrips dorsalis, thrips palmae. Several of these thrips have uh, been co occurring in the chili fields. But what we found was thrips parvispinus to be the most dominant thrips. And these are uh, these thrips are uh, usually uh, found mainly on the flowers, but they do occur on the young leaves also, and on the flower buds, and on the fruits. Now, uh, originally these thrips were from Southeast Asia, but in Southeast Asia, like Indonesia or Taiwan, they are not very serious pests. But in India, this year especially, it was found to be 
very very serious thrips in general are uh, yellowish to black in color they are very small tiny and uh, both the uh, younger stages and the adult stages damage the plant they have short life cycle in general uh, every thrip would complete uh, its life cycle in about 2 weeks time and uh, so also the thrips which attack chilies so every fortnight you get a new generation the eggs are laid in the plant tissues inside the leaf inside the flower the nymphs which hatch feed and then there is a stage called pro pupa and pupa which fall onto the soil and after a couple of days they again emerge and the adults live almost for a week and that is the time when they go to new areas and attack a uh, new um, in um, and cause new infestations in the months of uh, uh, october and november we've been having a lot of rains and uh, literature says that uh, most of the time heavy winds strong winds uh, help the thrips to move uh, far and wider and that's why we have seen them uh, spreading fairly fast right from uh, andhra suguntur uh, across telangana and up to bellary in karnataka and in uh, in the in future it can spread to other areas also we have to be careful now uh, in this uh, slide you can see the symptoms the leaves show an upward curling there will be marks or scars on the flowers the flower will drop then fruit also will have scars and generally there will be uh, viral symptoms if there is scryptothrips dorsalis which uh, transmits the tospa virus but it is generally said that um, the thrips parvis pinus uh, does not transmit any virus so um, maybe if this species is dominant we may not find lot of virus symptoms but all the other symptoms will be present now it is important to know how exactly to manage now generally management should not start when the plants are established in the field it should start at the seed uh, stage itself seed treatment with uh, uh, imidacloprid at the rate of 12 grams per kg is recommended so this is uh, uh, systemic and it keeps the plant um uh, well protected at least uh, for the next 3 weeks so treated seeds are available in the market we should go for that and then uh, if the nursery uh, is uh, raising the seedlings for the farmer in a portray then it is important that the portrays should be drenched with the, the liquid arca microbial consortium which is developed by the indian institute of horticultural uh, research and next the land preparation is also important because the thrips are found in the soil so uh, before transplanting uh, or after transplanting along the rows of the uh, plants uh, neem cake at the rate of 200 kg per acre should be applied and then once the plant gets established it is always good to go for a drip drip irrigation than flood irrigation now in the drip after uh, uh, irrigation is given rashvi liquid uh, neem so specially developed for sucking insects at the rate of 3 ml per liter should be given 2 weeks after transplanting or also the neem soap of iihr can be given it is important to repeat this after 2 weeks now if the first spray is rashvi uh, liquid neem soap the second should be rashvi liquid pongamia soap now this is also specially made for the sucking insects or you can also use the pongamia uh, soap of iihr at a rate of 5 to 10 grams per liter now these are all repellents which keep the thrips away from the field now it is also important that the plant should be healthy Uh, rich in chlorophyll uh, content so almost one month after the uh, transplanting 
uh, it is important to spray vegetable special, which is nothing but the micronutrients at the rate of five grams per uh, liter. It should be also noted while applying NPK, N should not be in excess. Then blue sticky straps have been found to be effective in attracting the uh, thrips, all these thrip species, and especially the migrating adults. And at least 40 to 50 blue sticky traps should be spread uh, in the field. Now, when we uh, examine the sticky traps, we can see the presence of uh, the thrips. Now, in such cases, what is important is that uh, we need to spray fipronil uh, at the rate of uh, 1.5 ml per liter or fipronil uh, should be um, uh, taken to the, uh, you read the contents, if there is a label claim, consult an expert, consult us also, we will guide you. And then one important thing which many farmers miss is when you spray, thrips are found under the leaves uh, and inside the flower uh, buds deep. So you spray over the flowers or you should spray under the uh, leaves or you should be if, if the if it is before flowering under the leaves is more important if it is at flowering under the leaves and over the flowering using a goose neck plants so you need to rotate the lance and that is how it becomes uh, effective then after fruit set and after flowering you get the fruit set and if uh, needed uh, we have to begin the bio pesticide sprays to begin with again we can go for rashvi liquid uh, neem or rashvi liquid pongamia these two can be alternately sprayed they are cheap and they will keep the uh, trips away from the uh, field now uh, it has been found that uh, entomopathogens and epns a combination of entomopathogenic nematodes Vivaria, Metarhizium, and Verticillium. It has shown good results because it reduces the adult population by uh, infecting the pro pupae and pupae. And if at this stage still some thrips are found, and if the farmer feels that there is a danger of reinfestation, then a second spray should not repeat fipronil. A second spray of spinosad at 0.3 ml per liter or mmactin benzoate at 0.4 grams per liter can be considered. The farmer should also take care to see that the anthracnose doesn't occur in the field by suitable fungicide sprays. Then generally chilies are found as monocrops. Now extensive monocrops give a lot of chance for thrips to infest. So it is good to intercrop uh, like with for every 20 rows of chilies or even 30 rows of chilies, one row of tomato can be grown. And whatever spray is given to chilies should also go into tomato. Now, also um, uh, along the buns or the borders, tall crops like sespania, maize can be grown so that the migrating adults from outside will not come into the field. Then the um, advisory by the uh, plant protection uh, uh, is very important. The plant protection advisor, Government of India has given advisory where um, the required insecticides and which insecticides with label claim can be used. So this should be uh, given and then you can harvest a very uh, infestation free healthy crop and when red chilies are produced and you're drying it, um, you know, the most of the thrips damage will be eliminated. There are uh, any uh, issues related to 
chilies or any of the vegetables or any horticultural crops uh, we would uh, give free consultancy at the international phytosanitary research services the phone number is there the email is there and this is whatsapp also you can contact us and uh, we are there to help you we will also facilitate uh, the uh, and uh, arrange for getting good uh, agri bio agri inputs for the farmers thank you very much